Any more? Now's the time. Real me. Because you've had a couple of weeks of experience now, so there what should I be. What I really, really, really just can't get across in my head is different textures. Like, I understand different strokes do different textures, but like, how do you differentiate? Let's say you have a sheet of paper next to a brick. It's okay. going to seem, seem like the same texture. Yeah. But it's pencil yeah. strokes. That's a good question. So, um, it's all pencil strokes, but you can you can pick up the paper texture, right? And you can even get darker values and continue just to pick up the paper texture and it de-emphasizes the individual mark, right? So that would be a smoother texture? Maybe, it's the paper texture. If you take away the edges, right? You just see the, the paper, right? It's like taking a rubbing of the paper. Um, the other thing too is if I wanna do a brick Right, that's in shadow, and I do this little paper texture thing. But then there are like little holes in the pockets of the brick. You know, I can start to like create those little holes and dots. And if I do it on a few, your mind will fill in the rest. You know, so on the next brick, I may not even include any of that texture, but you'll see, you'll think that it has that same texture because it, you recognize it as a brick. Yeah, exactly. Um, but other, like, the other thing is, you know, you can start a drawing with texture, you know? Like, you could go over your whole paper, like, making marks like this, you know? And then take a piece of toilet paper and rub it down, you know? And then you'll be fighting the original texture the entire time, but it'll give you a base texture to work with, you know? Um, but things are like, any repeated mark can become a texture, you know? So if you go like, you start doing this. It just becomes a texture eventually, right? Looks like fish scaly, right? Or something. So, just think of all the marks you could make. I mean, you could make little, And then you can do the same mark, but change directions. So you're doing a combination of texture and cross-hatching. You know? There's a million ways to approach it. It's just a matter of like, the thing is, is you want to base the, the, the mark you use for the texture on what you actually see. You know, and that, that just is more of, almost more of a personal preference because you're gonna see certain elements of, of the same subject differently than me. And well, cause, because we wanna bring different things out about it, you know? Like, I know, you might wanna bring some like creepy element into drawing a brick, right? Or I might want to like look at trash and find beauty in it. And so like the content will also describe how the textures work. <laughs> it's, it's funny to think about, right? But there's no reason not to start thinking about it now, you know. Creepy. I know, I was just thinking, how do you make a brick creepy? <laughs> value contrast, right? <laughs> like, think about it, like, like if you do your value scale, you know, you're, you're dark, yeah. Like, you have super dark, right? Like, if you do a, a brick in film noir, you'd use mostly, like, 9, 10 values, but then you'd have that little pop of zero, and then you wouldn't have any values in between, right? That would be your creepy brick approach. Put a little bit of blood on it, you got a horse. Yeah, that yeah, was right? my first thought, blood. <laughs> but then, you know, also graphite gets color to it. A little, like, more of a tonal shift color, color but you, know, you read it as warm or cool, depending. So this is all beginning to read as a texture too. Like, if you were to, you know, if you were to like, you know, turn this into a wall, 
Looks like a graffitied wall, right? That's kind of how texture works. You, texture works. You just Recognizable form plus random marks equals texture.